Hello and welcome back. This video will be a brief introduction to Fisher projections. Fisher projections are generally used to represent sugar molecules in biochemistry, so we really won't use them in this course, but we're just going to introduce you to how they work and how to interpret uh, the 3D conformation from a Fisher projection. So horizontal lines are used in a Fisher projection to represent attachments that are coming out of the page and vert vertical lines represent attachments going back into the page. So if we're on a Fisher projection, everything on the vertical is moving away from you and everything on the horizontal is coming out at you which is not a natural conformation for a molecule if you have a larger molecule, but it is a way to represent a chiral center without having to draw all these wedges and dashes. So biochemists prefer this method for sugars. Okay, so uh, the Fisher projection on the left is the same as the molecule here on the right. So you can see that molecules that have multiple chirality centers, like these sugars, can be drawn very quickly with a Fisher projection. Remember the vertical, everything's going away, and on the horizontal, everything is coming out at you. Okay. Okay. So two chirality centers here on the left, three chirality centers in the middle, those are these. Okay. Four chirality centers on the right. So uh, these sugars have many chirality centers. Generally, all of the middle uh, horizontal lines on a sugar is a chiral center. Okay, so they can be drawn very, very quickly like this. Another thing that uh, Fisher projections are really useful for is to determine whether molecules are enantiomers or diastereomers to each other. For example, this molecule that has two chirality centers, where each of those centers has R1 uh, has this, I'm sorry, this um, R group attached plus a bromine, a hydrogen, and the rest of the molecule. The second center has this R2 plus a bromine, hydrogen, and the rest of the molecule. So if you put both of the bromines on the right, then you can quickly draw its enantiomer by just swapping the configuration at those horizontals by putting the bromine on the left, okay, and the hydrogen on the right. Then we can draw uh, the diastereomers for those. So we can draw, let, let's just draw these out real quick ourselves here, okay? So we can say, uh, let's just make the top a um, an OH, let's just call that one an OH, and the bottom, let's make that a CH3, okay? So at the center, we've got bromine, hydrogen, bromine, hydrogen, okay? So we can quickly draw its enantiomer by swapping the horizontals. All, by all of the horizontals, swap them, now I've got the enantiomer. Because remember, when we draw enantiomers, we swap all the wedges and dashes. So essentially, I'm draw, draw, swapping all the wedges and dashes. Now I have both bromines on the right. On the second one, I have both bromines on the left. What if one bromine's on the right and the other one's on the left, like this? Bromine, bromine, hydrogen, hydrogen, okay? Then that molecule is going to be a diastereomer to both of those, okay? Now if I swap, do the opposite configuration, I swap the configuration at each one of those chiral centers, these two guys are enantiomers of each other because I've swapped the configuration at every chiral center, but they're diastereomers to the other two, okay? So I have two sets of enantiomers. So let me, let me circle the enantiomers to each other in red. Enantiomers, enantiomers, and then each of those is diastereomers to the other two, okay? So going back up, if I wanted to draw the um, enantiomer to the molecule in the center, I could quickly do that with a Fisher projection like this. Just by swapping all of the configurations at those center carbons. Now I've drawn the enantiomer to that molecule. So that makes Fisher projections very convenient for drawing sugars and their enantiomers. So let's identify the configuration at each one of these chiral centers and draw the enantiomer. Okay, so for A, I've got 
a CH2, I'm sorry, a C double bond O, OH at the top, and a CH2 OH at the bottom. I've got an NH2 at the middle and a on the right and a hydrogen on the left. So I can draw the enantiomer very easy by swapping the configuration just at that center, oops, just at that center carbon. Notice it doesn't matter if I draw that OH on the right or the left because I've got free rotation about this bond, so it's not going to matter, okay? All right, so those are enantiomers to each other. Okay, so what is the configuration? I've only got one chiral center here. What's the configuration at that chiral center? Well, there are little tricks to doing this, but for this class, we're just going to keep it simple. Let's just see if we can rotate this around and figure out what that configuration is. So let's... Remember, the verticals are going away from us, so let's draw it like this. Okay, and then I've got a CH2OH over here. So I'm drawing that molecule uh, here at the bottom. And then, um, that means if I rotate it this way to there, that NH2 is going to be coming out at us. And the hydrogen is going to be going back. Okay. Now let's figure out whether we've got R or S. All right, let's change colors here. So that means the nitrogen's number one, hydrogen's number four. Then I've got carbon versus carbon, okay? The carbon on the right has oxygen, 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 because each of these double bonds counts twice. The carbon on the left has oxygen and then the two hydrogens that are attached to it, okay? So the one on the right is gonna be number two and this is gonna be number three, okay? progression of rotation is 1 to 2 to 3, so this chiral center has the configuration of R. If this one is R, then its enantiomer must be S. Okay? Um, so, let's go ahead and do B. I think I'm going to have to erase everything before I can do it. I don't have any room. I may go ahead and let you work out the other two yourself. I may just do one more here. How about that? Takes me a minute to do this erasure. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the next one. So B, remember that these center groups are coming out and the verticals are going back. So to draw the enantiomer, I would keep everything the same at the top and bottom. And the, and the horizontals, I'm gonna uh, swap. Okay. So I've drawn the enantiomer here. Now what is the configuration at that chiral center? So I'm gonna Figure the configuration of this one by rotating it over. So I've got C and drawing a line angle drawing. CH3, and then I've got my aldehyde group on the right, and then my OH will be coming out at me, and my hydrogen will be going back. So notice I have uh, intentionally chosen the configuration that has the OH going back so that I can do that that RNS very easily. So my oxygen is number one, hydrogen is number four, then I've got carbon versus carbon, so I've got a tiebreaker here. Uh, this carbon on the right has oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen attached to it. Carbon on the left has hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this is number two and this is number three, okay? So the progression of rotation is one to two to three. The um, the configuration is S. So that means the original enantiomer must have been R. Okay, I'll let you go ahead and work the next two on your own. Okay, that is the end of the discussion on Fisher projections, and the next topic we'll talk about conformationally mobile systems.